Hi everyone, in this video I wanna build a working model of helicopter in full scale from the game called Rust, in fact it'll be such kind of experiment whether it is possible to build helicopter from some junk in the post-apocalyptic world using some tool and having a scrap metal dump nearby. I'll start the helicopter assembling with a frame from a shaped tube. After the frame base is ready I'll weld the edge of the girder to it to which the propeller will be attached. I'll weld another pipe to it for the tail. The main skeleton of the helicopter is ready, now we need to try on the engine. Supposedly I managed to find only such engine with a centrifugal reduction gear 1 to 2 in the landfill. But here arises the problem, how can we transfer the rotation of the lay shaft to the upright shaft of the helicopter propeller? We need a reduction gear that will transfer the rotation at 90 degrees. I'll also make it from scrap metal and all things I've managed to find in the dump. I need two corners, for identical bearings planetary cluster gears from the car differential, a pair of shafts, and a case for bearings from the tube. We need to slightly reduce the pipe in diameter for tight pressing of the bearing. I will use the press to put the planetary cluster gear on the shaft, while the press fitting the gear itself cuts the splines on the shaft. A retaining ring will be used for the fixation. The ready detail should be pressed into the case with the bearing. On the other hand we need another bearing to strengthen the construction and get rid of the radial play. The second part will already contain a small planetary cluster gear which has no splines, in order it couldn't rotate on the shaft I made the slots for the roller spline on the details. We need a case for these two details which I'll make from the angle. I welded covers on the sides and got angular reduction gear. This is how the rotation will be transferred to the propeller with a reduction 1 to 2. We need to attach an asterisk on one of the shafts. I want to transmit the rotation to the angular gearbox from the engine through the circuit. The additional sprockets will be used as spacers. By the way it's possible to attach some additional equipment such as a generator to them. The reduction gear case will become a connecting link of two parts of the girder. I'll weld its case to the earlier welded pipe. I'll put the platform for the engine nearby and immediately try it on. I fixed the sprocket and put on the circuit. It turns out that there's also a reduction 1 to 4. In total there are 3 reduction gears in the construction and the total number is about 1 to 16. This is about 300 revolutions of the propeller on condition that the engine produces 4000 revolutions per minute. Before testing I strengthened the girder as it dangled after a slight pressing on the circuit. Now we can start the engine and make a test.
It seems that everything is alright at maximum speeds, the circuit doesn't fly off and everything spins without any problem, that means we can move on to the shaft extension of the angular reduction gear, the pipe will serve as the shaft. I had to sharpen the reduction gear shaft a bit so the pipe could tightly fit it. I was gradually welding and straightening using a tripod. On the top of the pipe there will be an adapter rod. Further I put a casing from the pipe upon the elongated shaft. I placed the housed bearing on top. Started the engine and checked the rotation of the shaft. A swivel member from the midget car will serve as a bushing for the lifting air screw. It'll be perfect for air screw inclination. Sawed all the excess off the detail. I sharpened the connector for the bushing and the reduction gear axis. The former swivel member should be attached to the girder, for this purpose I screwed a pair of brackets to it. Also made a pair of brackets to attach the bushing to the girder. The bushing will be attached to the helm by means of levers, and the helicopter will be able to fly back and forward depending on the air screw incline. The air screw itself will be made of a metal sheet as well as in the game. Of course this is fundamentally incorrect production of the air screw, but as an experiment it should be tried. To stiffen the construction I sawed two laundrons from the shaped tube. The paddles themselves will be attached to the brake disc through the tube. The air screw turned out to be about 5 meters. I fixed it on the bushing with the bolts. Since it won't be possible to control the paddle's inclination, I set them on takeoff as much as possible. Supposedly as the character from the rust I didn't know that it was possible, and made it according to the drawing that I found in the dump. I even wonder whether it is possible to keep the height with such air screw design. I'll test the entire construction remotely as I'm not sure about its reliability at all. I screwed the servo motor on the engine body for the gas control and connected it with the shutter on the carburetor. The remote control is connected and we're ready to start the vehicle. Just in case I screwed the frame to the floor through the chain. We failed to drive up the air screw as the connecting bushing began to over twist. I tried to tighten it but no success so I had to weld it to the axes.
There was a whole apocalypse in the workshop, was feeling dreadfully even standing in the next room. Closer to the maximum RPM the chain began to go off, the planes of the sprockets shifted after the frame was welded. I adjusted the sprockets a bit by shifting the engine and tried to spin the air screw again. We couldn't manage to get the frame off the floor as there weren't enough revolutions of the screw. At maximum engine RPM the paddles have about 200 RPM and according to calculations we need two times more, tried to change the gear relation and put a bigger sprocket. This time it was the reduction gear that crashed as all the friction clutches from the centrifugal clutch rubbed off. It needs to be replaced with a more reliable one. I've always wanted to try one clutch from the brake drum, and according to the concept it fits the project well. It's made of the brake drum of a hub and two blocks. They say such clutch can stand really heavy loads, we'll see how it will act in my project. The gear ratio turned out to be 1 to 8, now the revolutions should definitely be enough. But it's impossible to give more than 400 revolutions, a centrifugal effort can break the air screw. Again we have about 200 revolutions, the engine have not enough power to overcome this mark, so it cannot spin to full. We should look for an engine about 50 horsepowers, and it's better to replace the air screw at least with a wooden one with a regular drop shape. If this theme will become popular I'll think about designing of a more serious vehicle. So far this is just a good experiment that gave me a good experience, and I was really interested in working on it. And that's all for today. Thanks everyone for your attention. See you as usual in the next video.